generally I get offered uh, the supporting roles and they're often more fun to play. Mm. Leading roles can be quite grueling because you have to, you kind of, you are the eyes of the audience often and therefore you, you navigate through a lot of people coming on doing, you know, supporting parts and they get, they get to do all the fireworks and you just have to observe. Mm. So uh, anyway, whatever the weather, I, it's, a, it's a pleasant situation for me. Yeah. 67-årig Bill Nye er en af de helt store levende legender inden for skuespillerfaget. Og det er endda på trods af, at mange af englænderens kendte roller er relativt små. Fra den snæversynede politiinspektør i Hot Fuzz. With respect, sir. You can't just make people disappear. Yes, I can. I'm the chief inspector. Over piratmonstret David Jones i Pirates of the Caribbean filmene til den afdankede sanger Billy Mac i den romantiske komedie Love Actually fra 2003. What's the best sex you've ever had? Britney Spears. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> She was rubbish. En skøn rolle, som sikrede Nye en BAFTA-pris og hans store og relativt sene gennembrud på filmscenen. Små roller, der gjorde stort indtryk. I denne uge er det biografpremiere på det romantiske drama Their Finest Hour, hvor Bill Nye nok engang har en mindeværdig birolle. Filmen er instrueret af danske Lone Scherfi, og den handler om en gruppe engelske filmmagere under 2. verdenskrig, der forsøger at søsætte en rørende propagandafilm, der kan opildne både britter og amerikanere til at tage del i kampen mod nazisterne. Your film must show your American sisters that this is a war that husband should be fighting. Their Finest Hour er en både sjov, romantisk og rørende kado til filmmediet. Og særligt Nye brillerer som en aldrende skuespiller, der er noget modvilligt takker ja til en rolle i propagandafilmen som en fordrukken onkel. Uncle Frank. 60's. Looks older. We all have a part to play in defeating him, not this part. The corpse role is dead before the end of act 3. <laughs> Men både Uncle Frank og skuespilleren viser sig at have et større hjerte, end man lige umiddelbart skulle tro. I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. You and me given opportunities only because young men are gone. But to turn our back on those opportunities, wouldn't that be giving death dominion over life? It's another fantastic supporting part for you as well. And that's that's what I've That's what I connect you with, with all these magical, beautiful, supporting characters. I don't remember too many, like, lead uh, characters. It's something about being in the, you know, not, not at the very center of, of the action. Well, it's, I think that's a function of my age. And I can, uh, I am very grateful that I continue to get offered work at all. But, and I get offered very, very good parts. But it's just traditional that in the movies, the leading roles are generally the younger actors. Um, and they're off, uh, and often leading roles. I mean, I you know I'm happy to play leading roles too. But I just generally I get offered uh, the supporting roles, and they're often more fun to play. Mm. Leading roles can be quite grueling because you have to. You kind of you are the eyes of the audience often, and therefore you you navigate through a lot of people coming on doing you know supporting parts, and they get they get to do all the fireworks, and you just have to observe. Mm. So uh, anyway, whatever the weather, I, it's uh, it's a pleasant situation for yeah. me. So in that way, there's almost a slight connection to uh, to your character. Of course, in the film, who's also who has played all these leading parts and now has offered this uh, this funny supporting part. Did you feel any sort of kinship with the character? Of course, you're much more charming. You're not as cynical, I'd I'd, I'd say. <laughs> well, I yeah. I mean, every actor, you know, you chart your your career through. You you can you can chart your age rather through the kind of parts you get offered. You know, you remember when you first had children in the movies. Then you remember. Now I've had grandchildren. Uh, Rachel McAdams had my first grandchild <laughs> the other two years ago. Uh, and, you know, there are those times when you're 39 or something, and on a good day you look 36, and on a bad day you don't. And then you, and you go for jobs and your agent says, well, they liked you, but, you know, it, and you realize you're just, you're, you know, it's the time when you discover you're never going to play Hamlet. Not, mm. that, not that I had ever any desire to play Hamlet. Um, when somebody offers you Claudius, <laughs> and you think, oh, I see, I'm Hamlet's uncle. Uh, so, I mean, everyone has that thing. And there are, even now, there are times when you read the script and the, the young leading man, it's a great part, and you think, oh, you know, part of you aches to play that part. But, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not like the character in the film. I don't imagine I could. But uh, I'm very, you can just be grateful in my business. If, 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 if you get offered like parts like the one in this movie, 
which is a great part in a great movie, and then you should just be grateful. You know, if you paid your clients half as much attention as you do that hyena, you might actually be an agent worth having. Big fires, won't you help to buy? Ambrose Hilliard, the man with the glint. Oh, I know it's a liberty, but would you do him for me, would you? Inspector Charnford? Someone has made a mistake. It's a simple mistake and easy to miss. I almost did so myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, Spitfires, Sammy. It's a pocket. It's a pocket. Oh. Thank you. I was very impressed by the fact that at the start, I kind of disliked him because, of course, he's a little full of himself. He's a little cynical. But, of course, there's this, we, we find out there's this beating heart underneath the surface. And, of course, I, I know that you don't uh, like to talk much about how actors find their emotions and that whole process. But is that difficult to make that, you know, to have that heart shine through when the character does have sort of a, a icy surface? Well, if the writing is any good, then you're in good hands. And if you're working with someone, and, I'm, and this is not PR, if you're working with someone as brilliant as Lona Scherfig, then you're in really safe hands. She's much, much cleverer than I am, which is what you require from a director. And every day she gave me big, fat, comic ideas, comedic ideas, or uh, things that might be funny, things that might tell the story, how to schedule all the information. She was brilliant at that. And so, therefore, I was guided very well in that respect. As for, you know, finding your emotions or anything of that kind, I don't really know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's something that's talked about, but uh, basically you're at work. Mm -hmm. So emotions are something you probably do in your spare time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you mentioned Lorna uh, yourself, and I find it very interesting that she, she hasn't really made a movie in Denmark, I think, in 10 years. She's done four movies in a row now in, in England. Uh, and this is a movie that's about a very quintessential like British era and, and, and British environment. So it, it does, does she have sort of a British sensibility to her? And it, is it interesting that she comes with an outside perspective to an era that's so inherently British? I think it's accepted uh, now because a lot of British subjects have been uh, taken on by uh, directors from other countries. She is hugely admired in England, uh, in Britain and elsewhere, but uh, therefore uh, there is no friction there. But also it, it can be, I think, very useful, very valuable to have, to, to come from, a, you know, in this case, a very British story from a different angle. It can be extremely valuable. You don't fall into the usual traps mm. because there are conventions about telling certain stories and about certain periods. And the acting can get a little weird because people are in 1940 or 1680 and everybody starts you know standing very well or mm -hmm. like everybody stood very well in 1680 I don't think so you know what I mean you can yeah. fall into those traps and if you have someone who's from uh, who has that kind of distance on it it can be very useful mm. but I remember reading an interview where you uh, where you said that you got very close to working with her before yeah uh, well, I'm assuming it was the Carrie Mulligan part in, in education, exactly. but your range, you know. Yeah, well, I was just, I was not available. So. But, um, yeah, no, I've, I tr we were going to work together, and, I've, and I met her first here when I came with The Boat That Rocked, ah. with the Richard Curtis movie, which yeah. was the first time I came to Copenhagen. And we met then, and we got on very well, and I know that Richard admired her tremendously. And, and, and then I... I, you know, and then I saw her films, and then I was, and then in, uh, there was another film where we might have worked together, and uh, and then this one came along, and, it, and the script was so fabulous, so the combination was irresistible. Mm. I gotta say, I'm not being at all ironic or sarcastic here, but I, f I think you have a, a very nice singing voice in the <laughs> film that shines through. Of course, it does so, of course, also in Love Actually. Uh, uh, as well. Is that something you've ever, you know, spent any time harnessing or thinking about? Not <laughs> really. I sing in the bath, where, <laughs> well, in the shower. But, uh, but I did when I was young, yeah. I had a band briefly. Wow. In, uh, in when, when I was in my 20s, like everybody, well, not like everybody <laughs> else, but like a lot of people, we never really got out of the garage. Okay. Do you know what I mean? What, what was it called? What, what did you play? The, uh, the band, I sang and wrote the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And with my friend who wrote the tunes, so I was the songwriter and the uh, and the singer, and uh, we just never really we didn't really get out of the garage, but um, it was uh, it was it was fun. Yeah, like you say, you were the songwriter, which reminds me. Of course, this is a movie that's very much about script writing, of course, 
And I know you, you've, you've dabbled a lot with, with writing yourself, and you've, you once had this dream of writing the big novel uh, I read. And I also read that you, you, you came up with the title of it, but not, not, not the actual book. Can you let us know what the title is? And is that still something in your mind? Write, Maybe one day I'll get to write the, Maybe the big novel. One day, I won't tell you the title, because basically it's embarrassing. <laughs> but um, one day maybe, I doubt it very much. I procrastinate at an Olympic level, <laughs> and I have, I've managed not to write a word all my life. But when I was young, yeah, my heroes were all writers. The only thing I was ever good at at school was the thing that came in easiest, mm -hmm. which was English. And I used to, but I am a, I am a sort of compulsive, yeah, I'm a compulsive reader. Mm -hmm. I read, it's what I do, it's my reward for everything. And when I was young, I, because of my vintage, my heroes are predictable. And, they, and, I, and I have no reading list because I, didn't, I left school very young because I flunked school. So I left school at sort of just before 16. So I, was, I didn't have any further education of any kind. So I just lumbered about in second-hand bookshops and I hit upon, guess what, Ernest Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, James Joyce, Ford, Mannix Ford, and anyone, who, anyone who'd been in Paris in 1920, because one book would lead you to the, you know, and you would just follow the trail. So I did run away when I was 17. I ran away to Paris to write the great English something, and I managed not to write a word. Okay. <laughs> Last question? Last question. Um, so you could actually say, like, the end is nigh... Yes, you so, could say yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's a That's bad pun. Right. Have you no, heard no, that no. before? I, yes, a yeah. couple of times at school okay. they used to. You know. <laughs> but I read this excellent interview with you in The Guardian with this, this interesting fact, that, and, and of course you're not the only actor who, who expresses this, but the fact that you try to avoid watching the movies that, that you, you, you're a, a part in. So what is it about, about the process when it's not about watching you know, the, the, final, the final picture? Uh, that, well, the process, really... the process for me doesn't include watching it. That's not for me. That's for someone else. That's for, pe that's for the audience. It, uh, I'm not required to watch it. I don't see why I would. I mean, I don't see what's in... Would you? Would well, you? I'm an editor, so I would love to, you know, see how it's all strung together. You know? would, but <laughs> would you if you were in it? Maybe not, no. Maybe. I wouldn't... You know, to the idea of... And I did try it when I was young and less complicated to look at. And it was still, uh, it was so undermining mm. because I see, I, I know too much. And I see all the compromises, all those, that default thing I do every time I can't quite pull something off, the little bits of cowardice where you just pulled back because you, you got scared or something, the bits where it's so far short of anything you had in mind. Uh, why would I put myself through that? It's information I don't need and I have to go to work again quite soon. So I already have above average uh, difficulty persuading myself that I can do my job. It's a very c b bizarre job. Mm. So I don't need hard, in hard evidence that, you know, all my worst fears are confirmed. So, you know, it's just easier. It's just life, if, if you get down to, you get down to, because it's quite reasonably tough anyway, you think, you just look for ways to re uh, reduce pressure. Mm. So uh, if you look at life watching your films and look at life not watching your films, less pressure. Yeah. Don't do it. It's just like that. 